The streets are full of September sunshine. The high-rise buildings are new, full of energy in the sun, and proud of themselves. Every face on the street looks nutritious. Everyone seems to have a background, arrogant and rich. Xiamo was walking on the street. He looked around the job advertisements with those thirsty eyes. There were so many job ads, waitresses, and male accountants over and over again. The city is just a such a street, with female waitresses standing on one side, male accountants standing on the other side. Hospitality and accounting constitute the flamboyant and rational order of modern cities. On one side is the gentle town, on the other side is the rich ground. The figures of waitresses and accountants line up all the way, drawing out the perspective effect of the city. To sum up in the most fashionable media discourse, drawing out the urban landscape, their figures are elegant, handsome, and decent. Their today's city and their smiles and gestures show the colorful bubbles of today's city everywhere. There is no theme, no capacity, unlimited styles, and free and easy. Their figures are greeted with applause and applause. It is a variety show. Xiamo didn't find a clue until four o'clock in the afternoon. He walked on the overpass. He stands in the center of the city. For a moment, he can't remember where the city is. Xiamo stood on the overpass. From nowhere, he remembered the words that little Su had said to him. She said to him on Mazda after the surgery, "She was empty." Xiamo was standing on the overpass, looking at the pictures of the city in September. There was a lot of vividness everywhere, and Xiamo was the only one empty. As long as someone slapped him, he would immediately turn into a two-dimensional poster advertising picture, posted at the corner of the road, repeating one sentence to the material world: "All said good after using." The Margaret Hotel has been renovated. Xiamo was wandering at the gate of the restaurant. He saw himself become a lonely soul in the mirror wall of the restaurant. The civilized world is full of reflections, and everywhere there is a kind of open-mindedness and brightness that encompasses everything. Xiamo facing the mirror, he saw the mirror push him out little by little, polite and peaceful. The mirror is the greatest secular philosopher in contemporary cities. Its world view and methodology all reflect the spiritual essence of being born out of nothing, make all promises, and take no responsibility. Decorating buildings with mirrors constitutes the characteristic of our time. After all, this is still the way of accounting. The mirror makes our world wider, and our space is still a quotient divided by two. Xiamo walked to a wooden billboard. The billboard was very exquisite. And Margaret Hotel recruits two accountants and several waitresses. When Xiamo saw the word accountants, a wave of anger broke through the sky, and it was unstoppable. Finally, found an excuse. Xiamo kicked off the billboard. Xiamo shouted to the street, "What do you need besides accountants? What do you want so many accountants for?" Xiamo's hysteria did not arouse social attention. Everyone on the street has a place to go. People have no time to wander around. Who concerned about Xiamo was the two security guards of the hotel. Out of duty and self-defense, their majestic figure moved towards Xiamo. Their uniforms were very strong, iron blue, and their gestures were severe. Xiamo was taken to the second floor. The air conditioning was very good, and the color was a kind of flattering tone. The sheepskin sofa was so soft, 
pleasing and welcoming people in every moment. What a good place! Xiamo had no money, didn't he come in? A young man came in, about the same age as Xiamo, clean, decent, and shrewd. The young man is half a head shorter than Xiamo, but his eyes can be condescending at any height. His hands were in the pockets of his pants. He walked to the front of Xiamo and slowly said, Why smashed my thing? Xiamo didn't speak. He took out all the changes from his pocket and piled them in front of the young man. The young man said, Not enough. Xiamo said, That's all for me. The young man said, You have clothes. Xiamo glared at him, took off his jacket, and threw it over. The young man said, Not enough. Xiamo stripped himself all off, including two stinking socks. Only leave a pair of football pants for himself. The young man said, I can guess who you are. I know what you want to say. Don't say anything. You are not cynical, but poor. You have only one attitude towards the world. Criticism. Others carry you on their shoulders, but you pointed out that people should not hunch. This is your f***ing artist. The young man took out his wallet from his suit pocket, pinched out an old man's head with his middle finger and index finger, and said to Xiamo, Go get a taxi. Xiamo stood still and laughed weirdly. Xiamo said, It is the life that forces the artist to face the world naked. The young man laughed at Xiamo and said, This sounds interesting. It's worth 200 yuan. Xiamo put his finger into the man's wallet and pulled out two. Xiamo looked at the two new money, wrapped them, and said to himself, it turned out to be very easy to make money, just to talk empty. Xiamo got out of the taxi naked and looked funny. Master Gan carried the railway ranch and saw Xiamo at a glance, and he held a handful of changes in his hand. Master Gan gave a hey and said sharply, Who did you fight with? Xiamo smiled but did not answer. Master Gang put down the wrench and pulled his face down. Tell me, I'll go find him. Xiamo raised the money in his hand and said loudly, I won! When Xiamo opened the door, Little Belle was kneeling on Little Sue's bedside, folding origami airplane. She couldn't hear the door opening and was folding seriously. Little Belle's paper airplanes lined up on Little Sue's bed. Little Belle raised her head and saw Little Sue's eyes staring at the door in a daze. A layer of tears suddenly floated in her eyes, thickening little by little. Little Belle turned her head. Xiamo leaned on the threshold, holding the money, and looked at Little Sue silently. Little Belle stood up and quietly got out and saw her dad beckoning her fiercely. Xiamo walked to Little Su's side, only looked at her for a moment, and the two kissed silently. It was a sad case, tired and long. Little Su's fingers crawled blindly on Xiamo's back, like autumn silkworms that couldn't find a place to form cocoons. Little Su clung to Xiamo, and Xiamo felt a great change in her body. Her breasts lost their tenacity and elasticity, and moved back softly on his chest. Xiamo smelled a faint milky on Little Su's body. This smell lingers in the evening of September, making the colorful sunset more enchanting and helpless. Xiamo was enveloped by this milky smell, and he whispered Little Su's name softly. Self-esteem is surging morbidly. Xiamo knelt on the bed and hugged Little Su tightly. Little Su stood up and opened her mouth wide, breathing hard. 
The two trains were crossing under the window. The sound of the wheels was chaotic, and the ground shook rapidly as they crossed. The trains were missed. They whistled in their respective directions, and the sounds faded away on both sides, opening up the boundless space of the world in human hearing. Dusk fell in the reflection of the railroad tracks. The railroad tracks lay in quietly on the edge of the city, and the railroad tracks lay in quietly on the edge of life. In this world, only they understand the ins and outs of the world, but they are silent and abide by the metal character.